Hi there, and welcome to I'll Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits, and this is a little weekly podcast where I try my best to answer some of your questions. Today I am wearing the Frame Your Face cowl, and I also sound like a little, a little hazy. Um, I am just recovering from Rhinebeck weekend, which was such an amazing weekend. I mean, I can't even wrap my head around it. It was so, so good. So thank you so much to everybody who came out, who brought their framed sweaters or their frame your face cowls, your whips, who were wearing other patterns of mine that you've knit and came up to show me. I just appreciate it so much. It was really the best weekend of the year. I am so, so filled up from last weekend. Um, but it is always a bit of just with the traveling and everything, I always get a little drained. So um, I'm just just kind of recovering my energy from all that. And if you're a newsletter subscriber, you know that we are also smack dab in the middle of a very big move. We are moving back to Michigan. We are so excited to be heading back home closer to our family and we've got a little baby niece that is pulling us back that way. So anyways, we are so, so excited about the move. But to say life's a little crazy, a little chaotic right now is probably a bit of an understatement. So, pardon the tired voice. Let's go ahead and jump into some questions. Oh, and this version of Frame Your Face, which I just love the black and white. I'm in my like black and white era right now. Um, but this is knit up in Ritual Dyes Sprite. So if you wanted to know what yarn I used for this one, it is the sport weight version. And <clears throat> let's go ahead and jump into some questions. Question number one today, I am knitting a top down turtleneck, which began with nine inches of two by two rib before going into a simple, simple raglan body. I'm halfway through the body and I've tried it on, but I'm concerned that the neck will be too high. Can I just unpick the cast on edge, which they did a tubular cast on, frog down to the height I want and then cast off? Would that work? I love everything else about the sweater and would like to keep it as is apart from this. So yes, I would wait though until you are totally finished with the sweater because you began the sweater right from the turtleneck, what's gonna happen is once it's blocked and you're wearing it, gravity is going to pull that turtleneck down further than it looks when trying it on before blocking it and having the whole body added. So I would definitely just make sure you see how much it's gonna stretch down before you take any height off of it. Um, but after that, yeah, so it's going to be a little finicky undoing that tubular cast on. You might, yeah, that part's just going to be finicky. You can kind of snip into it and it's going to take a hot minute to get in there and like pick it all out. Um, but then you should be able to unravel down <clears throat> to the height you want, put your needle back in and bind off. If you've been watching this podcast for any length of time and I have talked about different situations where we end up going into a knit from the cast on edge instead of down from the bind off edge. What happens is we are going against the direction in which we knit the item. So you're gonna feel like it's a half stitch off, like it's almost missing a stitch or part of a stitch when you try to put it back on your needles. So just like finagle a loop to make up for that weird stitch thing. That's the only thing I like to make people aware of is if you think about your knits, your little Vs, um, when we are knitting, they are Vs, they're like this. But when the direction of that knitting is then flipped because your cast on edge is down is here and then you knit down, um, you're looking at the tip. And so you're gonna, it's just gonna, you're going in the opposite direction basically. Um, so just be aware of that, but know that it's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, it'll be fine. I, the only other thing I would think of, because you did a tubular cast on, if you then try to do, let's say like a tubular bind off, 
it's not going to be perfectly lined up with your knit with your columns of stitches again because it's facing the other direction so they're gonna look a half stitch over um, all the way around so that's something to think about and consider will that bother you i mean if you they had you do a nine inch turtleneck that's obviously meant to be scrunched or folded down so do you see the cast on like is it folded and then folded again you know almost like a tri-fold to give you kind of a thicker turtleneck <clears throat> i would think because that's that would be three inches of height if you did that double fold down um so then it wouldn't matter because you're going to be kind of hiding that edge anyways but just consider that consider am i going to see this edge how tidy does it need to be will this be okay if i take it out and then there's a they snuck in a second question which i thought was really great one that maybe a lot of us could chime in on um so that is do you have any recommendations for places to go get answers to knitting questions I am a lone knitter without a local store, so there is no one I can ask in person. Your podcasts have been the best source of information so far, but if I want to ask a specific question and get an answer, where can I go? Googling doesn't always work. Do you have any books you recommend? Would you recommend joining Patreon or something else? So um, I think one place that might be nice to go is if you use Ravelry, there are so many forums. And they generally are filled up with a lot of people who are really generous with information. And like they're, they're, they're you can find some really community minded forums in there that want to chat about things um, like spinning, knitting, whatever. And people will ask questions and other people will come in and answer. So it kind of gives you the feeling of a local yarn store if maybe you don't have a local yarn store. Um, as far as joining a Patreon, I can't really, I don't know what Patreon you would go to that would give you that benefit. Um, so I don't know about that. I do think here on YouTube, there are so many videos um, that hopefully a lot of the questions that might come up might be answered here where you could watch videos. Um, I do, most of what I learned came from knitting books. So I definitely recommend going to like your local library, checking some out um, to kind of see what books you find to be the most helpful. I would say anything by Elizabeth Zimmerman or Barbara Walker are great resources. Those are the ones that helped me so much. Stitch and Bitch um, by Debbie Stoller. That is actually how I taught myself again how to knit i learned as a kid from my grandma but then came back to it in my teens and that's the book that got me going um the original one of that that's such a good one but there are so many out there um so i think a library would be great because you could check them out and see what ones you find to be the most helpful one that i another one that i think is really great as far as like those little like questions that might come up would be like Patty Lyons has a book called um, Knitter's Bag of Tricks and that one's really great because it's a lot of those questions that I feel like you end up having to kind of figure out yourself um, through trial and error she kind of covers that all in a book so that would probably be a really great one um, but yeah I tend to be a book collector because I find that I learn well from books so that tends to be the route I go um, but if anybody else has any like great forums or um, there's like Slack and Discord, I don't know anything about them because I've not used them, but I bet there's great forums on those if you don't use Ravelry. Um, so anyways, I think anyone, if you are like, oh, I've always found great help from like this online resource or from this book, please drop those in the comments below. I think we'd all benefit from finding out each other's like favorite knitting resource books. I mean, there's also the principles of knitting, which is like a huge mega book full of all things. Um, it is a little more reads like a textbook to me. It's a little drier. Um, as opposed to like an Elizabeth Zimmerman book, which is going to be very conversational. So just depending on what kind of style you prefer. But yeah, there's so much out there. So um, I hope that gets you started. And I hope that anybody else with like a favorite forum or book or anything like that, please pop it into the comments. Uh, before I forget, because I meant to say this right out the gate when I was talking about our move. 
I'm having a mega moving sale, but there's only a few hours left. So if you are watching this on Friday, October 25th, you have till midnight Eastern Standard Time to take advantage of the sale. It's been going on for a week. Today is the last day. It is 50% off of all of my independently published patterns, which includes almost all of my patterns. There's like three that I published with other companies that can't be included because I don't solely own the rights to them, such as like Ronin would be one of them. I published them with Wool People. Um, but pretty much all of my patterns are included. You can shop either on Ravelry or in my web shop. And the discount code is Michigander, M-I-C-H-I-G-A-N. D-E-R, that's so funny to spell without like looking at it, um, all caps. I will type it right at the top of the notes as well. I'm going to do that right now so I don't forget. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping with that. Sales can't be added retroactively. Always please make sure that you've added your discount code and hit apply before you finish your purchase because I can't add it after the fact. Um, so also always type it in yourself. It's uh, never copy and paste coupon codes. What can happen is you accidentally select a space before after the code and so then you think the code doesn't work. So typing it yourself, make sure that you don't accidentally grab more than the actual code itself. Um, yeah, those are the two big things. Type it in yourself. Make sure you apply it before um, finishing your purchase. And the code is good on my website, on Ravelry, on all of my patterns, except for those that I publish with other people. And it ends tonight at midnight. So October 25th, 2024 at min midnight Eastern Standard Time. So um, if you get my newsletter, you got a big reminder about it yesterday. But I just wanted to mention it here too, in case you don't follow me on Instagram or get my newsletter. I rarely do public sales like this. So, and it's a big one. It's a honker. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, my question is about washing, blocking alpaca yarn. I knitted a broom, my favorite sweater ever. I planted it more in a variety of colors. I'm so happy <laughs> um, out of oh dang decay. However, when I blocked it, one side of it was totally flattened and not fluffy. Um, such a bummer. Any thoughts about how to avoid this for the next time I wash my sweater? So it's, I'm guessing it's the side that was on the bottom that it laid on, kind of smooshed down the fluff. So what you can actually do is use like a soft bristle brush. Um, so, like Coco Knits, I think, even sells a brush specifically for this, but just like a soft brush and you can just fluff it. So flip it over and just gently and fluff your fluff again. Um, so that's what I would do is I would just use something like that, like a soft to kind of kick up all the good fuzz again. Um, but otherwise, no, not really. I mean, I always lay my sweaters flat to dry. I definitely wouldn't want to hang it because it's going to totally distort the shape of the sweater. Um, so yeah, that would be my best tip is just to fluff it after it's dry. Next question is about the night and day cowl. Um, I just finished your new night and day cowl. I'm amazed by how many finished cowls I have seen for that one already. So amazing. Um, it was such a fun knit. My problem is that my I-cord bind off edge is rolling. I soaked and blocked with pins. I even seamed it up hoping that would help how it, how it lays. I'm not sure if I bound off too tight, too loose, or maybe my yarn choice that is causing the roll. I used Barocco Vintage DK as I needed an easy care slash wear yarn for my lovely and very busy sister. Any suggestions? I'm 100% casting on another one. Well, I'm so, so excited that you enjoyed it enough to want to knit a second one. Um, a couple things here. I have found that when doing an I-cord bind off, I, they aren't generally going to be too tight if anything, maybe a little loose. So I would pay attention on your next one and see if you can't knit it. To, I, like I always hesitate to say like to do it tighter because I don't want you to overcompensate, but you definitely don't have to try to do it loosely. Okay. You don't have to be like, Ooh, got to keep this nice and loose because they just in general, I cord bind offs I have found tend to be nice and loose. I cord edges can be tight, 
but I've not had that issue with binding off. So don't try and be overly loose with that. Uh, I just had a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, did I hit record? <laughs> <laughs> um anyways okay the other thing is it could be a little bit of your yarn choice i did find that using a woolly wool really helped with the stitch pattern and the edge of this cowl i used harrisville nightshades and daylights and i've had no issues with that edge rolling but that yarn has structure to it you know it's not super drapey um, so I don't know what is in Barocco Vintage DK, but I would, like if it were me personally, if I was to pair this yarn with like, let's say a softer, drapier, super wash, any of those kinds of yarns, I would probably want to pair it then with a woolier yarn to help combat that. And I think it's going to do better with the stitch pattern and that edge, um, so there's a couple ideas for you that I would say. I did I do think that like the the like squishy kind of toothy wools play really, really well with that pattern. So that's not to say you can't use a drapier yarn, just know you might get a little bit more of that rolling. But yeah, definitely try it with the cast on edge, um, snugging it up a little bit. See if that helps. All right, next question. I understand the importance of knitting a swatch but I really don't like knitting a swatch in the round. Will a swatch knit flat and combination knit be equivalent to a swatch knit in the round? And welcome back to Michigan. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay, so he, I, love, I love where your brain's at with this question because in combination knitting, when we purl, we wrap the yarn under the needle instead of over and it uses less yarn which is going to more closely mimic a stockinette swatch where we knit all the knit stitches on the same side um it's going to more closely mimic knitting in the round because we're always knitting because knits use less yarn than pearls so i definitely like what you're thinking here but I would not feel comfortable saying that that is going to be an equivalent because it's you're not doing the same thing. So if you are not doing the same thing as you will do in your project, there is no guarantee that it's going to end up being equal. I what I would be curious of is if you have tried the knitting in the swatch in the round method where you just carry a big loop behind, you're going to have sloppy edges. It's just the way it is but at least then you're not sitting there knitting a little tiny tube on smaller needles. Like you literally are just knitting a swatch and you just carry a big loop so that you can start back on this needle side again. So you never turn your work. Um, you just slide your stitches back down, carry a loop behind your hand and start knitting again. Slide your stitches back down, carry the loop knit across your row again. Um, but I, I get it. I also don't love swatching in the round, but I have found what works pretty well for me is I carry quite a big loop and then I can avoid cutting my swatch, which means I can just unravel it if I need that yarn. If you know you have plenty of yarn and you are not worried about that, you can keep that loop pretty small and you'll just cut it and then wet block it and open it up and let it dry flat. Um, but yeah, I'm always going to recommend that you swatch in the way that you plan to knit the item because otherwise you might not be able to trust it. But just know you're not alone. <laughs> Swatching in the round is kind of a pain in the butt. I get it. All right, last question today. Actually doesn't have a question in it, but I think I have the vibe of what they want. Um, a lot of time when I knit sweaters, the chest area fits really well. Things start changing the closer I get to the waist. The back seems too short compared to the front. It also feels like the bottom circumference is way too big and just sticks out at the back with a huge gap. It just doesn't hang well. The front looks fine. So I'm guessing your question is like, what can I do about this? What it sounds like to me is that maybe you have a bigger bust in comparison to your waist and you are somebody who might really benefit from waist shaping in their sweaters. So you might, what you wanna do is end up around the small of your waist, decreasing in to help bring that sweater in 
um, a little closer to your body. It's going to help minimize that gaping that you're feeling. Uh, also, if you tend to be, if you are fairly busty, um, that is why your, wait a minute. I was thinking that the bustiness would also be why you're ending up with a short, it's shorter in the back than in the front. But that would be opposites, wouldn't it? I have run into somebody who every time, and I do feel like they were bustier, which is what, what made me think of that. Um, every sweater, they feel like it's just a little too short in the back or significantly too short in the back, but it's fine in the front. So one of the things we talked about with her was adding short rows in the back to do a little drop hem. You could also do a split hem where you are going to just knit the back longer than the front. Um, but short rows can also be a really, really nice way to add more length in the back. I don't know what sweaters you've been knitting, um, if maybe they don't have any back neck shaping at all, and that is part of the issue is you do need some back neck, neck shaping in there so that the back of the sweater is a little bit longer than the front because we want the backs of our sweaters to come up along our back neck, but we want them to drop a little bit in the front so they don't feel too close to the front of our neck. Um, so yeah, I think from what it sounds like, it fits really well in the front, um, but you have that gaping at the back. I think that doing some waist shaping would probably really help. Another suggestion, which you might have to figure out sizing then, but you could also move the sleeves further back in the sweater. So if you think about a sweater, um, it's one of those times where I need like a pen and paper, but if we think about a sweater, <laughs> it's these are all of our stitches here's our neck hole we're looking at it from the top down so if we think about a sweater in general what we're going to do is the sleeves are going to be right here right in the middle and then we're going to have our front and the back of our sweater what you might need is to bring the sleeves back this way so that the back is actually smaller than the front and that might help with the gaping that's happening at the back and in a lot of patterns, it doesn't really matter where you decide to have your sleeves. You know, like let's say that, you know, most designers are gonna just like evenly do it depending on how fitted the sweater is or what they're going for stylistically. But what you could do, let's say they have 100 stitches in the front, 100 stitches in the back, and we're just, uh, these numbers are not accurate, we're just using numbers. And let's say 20 stitches for each sleeve. Well, what you could do is take 20 stitches from the back, so that would be 10 on each side, and put those in the front. So you're gonna do 80 stitches back here, 20 stitches for a sleeve, 20 stitches for a sleeve, and then you're gonna do 120 stitches for the front, and just shift those back and see if that helps how that sweater is draping on your body. Um, you could also decrease out, like let's say you don't want that silhouette, you don't wanna do waist shaping, Another option is to decrease out like 20% of your stitches right before you go into the ribbing of the bottom of the sweater, which used to be a really classic style, <coughs> excuse me, that I don't see as much anymore, but there's at least in a lot of um, styles that I have been tending to knit, but you absolutely could if you want to do that little nipped in waist or make sure that like you don't get the blown out ribbing that kind of turns into it almost gives an a-line silhouette um you can decrease up to 20 percent of your stitches right out so let's say you had 100 stitches on your needles you would go ahead and in one single round decrease out 20 stitches all the like evenly spaced around and then go into your ribbing the only thing you need to make sure is that you keep whatever let's say that ribbing is one by one or two by two you just need to make sure that you're still gonna have if it's two by two ribbing your um number once you've decreased out all your stitches still needs to be divisible by four so you can still do your two by two ribbing if that makes sense or if it's one by one ribbing you just need to make sure you still have an even number by the time you do those decreases 
Um, so hopefully that helps. There are some fabulous books out there. Again, head to the library, your local yarn store, check them out online. Um, Amy Herzog has some fantastic books on fitting your body. Um, really, and she has a number of them. Uh, Yasolda Teague has a great book. It's no longer in print, but you can still get it digitally. And it's called Little Red in the City. And that one is fabulous. It, it talks all about putting in bust darts and all kinds of great shaping to help get that really optimal fit. So there's lots of books out there on sweater fit for our own unique bodies. And there are people who are really, really good at teaching that and sharing that information. So there's a couple names for you to check out. Amy Herzog, you sold the Teague. Um, and that might really help you get your sweaters to fit and feel more comfortable for your body. All right. I think I covered it all. Um, the sale ends tonight, just a few hours. So take advantage if you would like to, if you've had any patterns of mine on your wish list. Um, yeah, Brian Becknett along is all done and dusted. Thank you all for another great year. If you participated, it really, really, really was so special. It's, my brain is still trying to catch up with everything and I love going through all the photos that everyone shared on Instagram and everything. Um, so yeah, I think that about sums it up. If you are feeling a little post Rhyme Back Knit Along sadness, um, we have our Knit Along Challenge in November is just around the corner. So that's a really fun one. It's just four days and we try and bust out a pair of socks in those four days. It's really fun. So we would, of course, love to have you join that. There will be more about that coming out in the next couple of weeks, but I hope you have a great weekend and I hope to see you back here next week. Bye.